the risks of production, whether it grows a crop or not, of market, whether people will buy it or not, and legal, whether you're going to get sued for growing it or not. The grower carries the lot. GE is not the answer to questions of politics and economics. That's why we, we're having trouble feeding the world. Politics and economics. It's not agronomic. We can grow the food now without GE. We waste 30% of what we grow. On top of that, as your farmers told me the other day in Ashburton, they don't want to feed the world if the world can't pay for it. Farmers aren't a charity. We're a business. We have to be to survive. If people don't act to be GE or not GE in New Zealand, decision will be made for you. And probably not by New Zealanders, ultimately. So, to remain GE free in New Zealand is a long term effort. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So an epilogue, if I were a Kiwi, and presumptuous of me to say that because I'm not of an Aussie, but I like Kiwi, uh, New Zealand's a wonderful place. You must maintain the independence of your industries. You mustn't sell them to these people. Your primary industry research, if companies want to do research in this country, sell the research to them. Make them pay for it. Don't sell them the research institutions. Or the IP. Yeah, all the IP. Product liability must remain with the patent owner. This we didn't do in Australia. Absolutely critical. The patent owners must be liable for their products. Products derived from GE sources must be clearly labelled as such. So your customers will trust you. New Zealand has a brilliant reputation all around the world for producing safe, clean, reliable, quality, trustworthy food. You grow two GE crops, you've lost it. You're just like us. Then you're a not quite trusted food producer, just like the Yanks, and you can argue with the world about your stuff on price. At the moment, you're getting three and four times what Aussie bee farmers get for your manuka honey. You go GE, you've lost it. Product availability, uh, protect the availability and integrity of public plant varieties. Don't let them be outlawed. And if they try and outlaw them, grow them privately and then share them with your friends. Here we go again. And have your representatives, your farmer representatives in groups like that, represent New Zealand farmers, not international companies. You get it? We know you're at the end anyway. Yep. And that's my final slide. Actually comes from the uh, from the US. And it is so true. Thank you very much. Julie Newman um, formed a group called the Network of Concerned Farmers and has campaigned vigorously um, about the adoption of GM. A long time ago. Yeah, she's still active, but not as active as she, she was. She was here last year. She was here last year with, with Stefan and I. Um, I remember it around eight years ago or something. Like yeah, that. indeed. She's currently attending the uh, Notre Dame University in Fremantle in the US, in Western Australia, studying political science. And at the moment, she's doing the law units and is doing very, very well. Um, there were 20 academic awards given in, at the uh, Notre Dame University um, a few weeks ago. 20 academic awards among 2,000 students Julie got two of them. She's, yeah, she's firing. I she mean, she was great last year on our tour. Um, you know, I mean, things, uh, the big companies are working against us. I mean, you know, it's all not all Julie. I mean, Julie needed a lot of support. She had a lot of support. Um, and she's been through some pretty tough times through that time, but she's still going. And there's other people, you know, working as well. Um, 
a friend of ours, Scott Kinnear, who's uh, got organic retail shops in, in Melbourne, a couple of, and others are working with a sort of a new organisation to try and help Steve Marsh in his court case. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, there's still stuff happening there. I think Aussie could still claw back, it would be hard. Um, but if they just outlawed intentional growing of GE canola, we do the cotton at the same time, would be great. But the canola in particular is the problem, the particularly problematic one. Um, and then just keep back, back breeding. The contamination could eventually be reduced to a minuscule amount. We, we, we'll have to fight to the other do it. Just, yeah. just an example, since, Politics, uh, since GE hit over there, um, two years ago in Victoria, the state I live in, there were 14 sites receiving GE canola deliveries. Big sites, silos basically. That was two harvests ago. Last harvest there were nine. There's actually a very high rate of disadoption happening where people have tried it, it hasn't done the job, and they're walking away from it. The seed's been discounted to them and... Yeah, so we, we now have a, a, a circumstance where the farmers are becoming disenchanted with GE. The customers don't want to eat it. They've never been on side with GE. But the GE companies have done a very good job at the level of the bureaucracy, the regulators and so on. And there's a few farmer representatives who um, I think should read the life story of Bidcoon Quisling, who was... Um, do you know who Bidcoon Quisling was? He was a Norwegian politician who helped the Nazis take over Norway during World War II. And do you think who should read it? Um, some of the people who claim to represent Australian farmers should oh. read about the story of Bidcoon Quisling. Maybe they have. <laughs> <laughs> or, or perhaps William Joyce, so known more popularly as Lord Hawthorne. So, um, do you can all use for